of protest and also in Richmond now gaining momentum. People across the world and in Richmond tonight banded together for a day of worldwide action. Good evening, everyone. I'm Angela Pellerano. Thanks for joining us tonight. Developing now in downtown Richmond, this is a live look at Kanawha Plaza. Where about, there you hear them right there, where about 75 Occupy Richmond protesters are still gathered. CBS 6 photographer Bo Menethy has been monitoring the situation and is bringing us this live picture for you. He says about 55 people said they are going to stay the night on the sidewalk next to Kanawha Plaza. This evening's demonstration has been peaceful and police are no longer at that location. But earlier today I spoke with people from the group Occupy Richmond to find out what they really want. It's our top story at 11. Around 500 protesters identified as Occupy Richmond filled Monroe Park Saturday afternoon. It's not a movement with one cause, says a protester, but diverse causes. And yet they are all united in that something has to change. Some protesters feel Congress is not listening, and President Barack Obama has done a poor job as president. If he was a really good president, if he was a president of the people, he would have come out to us, because he has the power to do this. He would have come out to us and said, your Congress is bought, and I will not work with a bought Congress. President Obama had record corporate contributions for his campaign. This, the solutions I feel like as far as just to be honest with America. I mean, I feel like the government need to be honest with us as a people. Sue Frankel Street blames corporations for less jobs. A lot of those jobs, people aren't making a living wage. And the, and the people that are making the most money at their corporate jobs are getting way more than they need. I think some of the health problems that our nation faces are completely related to things like income inequality, oppression, exploitation. I'm angry with the Federal Reserve as a privately owned corporation. Right now money is monopolized by the Federal Reserve, so they get to control how much money goes in the economy, how much is taken out. We need money for our livelihood, so indirectly to control our livelihood. If you take care of each other before we're arrested. With police at bay, hundreds marched to Kanawha Plaza near the Federal Reserve Building in Richmond, hoping someone will listen. Everyone here has their own personal micro and macro economic issues, and we're all united in the fact that something has to change. And now we're taking you live to the developing situation in Times Square. That's where thousands of people march from the financial district, carrying signs, banging on drums, and chanting, we are 99%. Now, it's still going on at this hour, as you can see. Police are in riot gear and also on horses trying to push people out of the square. Of course, we will continue to monitor that situation for you. For the most part, protests have been peaceful, but right here, when the movement spread to Rome, Italy, this fiery scene erupted. Check it out, a building set on fire, burning cars, and protesters breaking windows at banks and also at stores. Station excellence. Now at noon, protesters camped out in Richmond say they won't be moved despite police efforts to clear them out. Hello, everybody. I'm Rob Cardwell in for Cheryl Miller today. Thanks for joining us. It's been three days since Occupy Richmond protesters took over a space at Kanawha Plaza in downtown Richmond, and now the police are getting involved, and protesters say they aren't budging. Senior reporter Wayne Coble is live with our top story. Rob, I can tell you, just a few minutes ago, Chief Brian Norwood arrived here to talk to demonstrators. This is not the first time the Chief has talked with them. In fact, it's the third time. But still, there's this question of, is there a movement to get occupied Richmond out of this downtown plaza? And what they say is, while the number of people holding signs has dwindled, the number of tents and people spending the night here has increased. And some believe that's a big problem. There shouldn't be any reason that the city cannot accommodate this movement, but uh, the resistance has already started. And these may be part of the problem. We had gotten to go ahead to put up tents. Uh, apparently that was uh, overridden by the uh, chief of police. Nelson said he spoke to the chief here last evening and he believes a ban on tents is for one reason only. I think basically what they're trying to do is they want to see if uh, the, rains, the rains tomorrow will wash us away. And some here are concerned a ban on tents could lead to a ban on sleeping here at night. There's a known area where you can sleep at and be safe. This man has been sleeping here the past seven months. Kanawha Plaza, a well-known place for the homeless to seek refuge. 
Many here are concerned they might get pushed out if the demonstrators are forced to go. I don't have a tent, and maybe somebody might get offended at me if I say this, but maybe they should take the tents down in the daytime, you know, because you don't want to be disrespectful. You know, even though it's about making a point, you also want to have respect in your thing. And this is the whatever, the district or whatever, all the money. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Now, again, less than five minutes ago, I spoke with Chief Nord, who has come out here for a third time. He was here last night and said that he respectfully asked for people to remove the tents and tarps. He came out again, the same wording, I respectfully ask that you remove the tents and the tarps. He also gave the organizers here the code section. But the chief tells me that he understands this is a movement that's going across the country. He understands that they have rights and freedoms. At the same time, he has the law to uphold. While he does not give them a timeline, again, he does ask that they remove the tents. One other thing, as we said in this report, this is an area that's well known to a lot of people that is known for the homeless to sleep here. The chief tells me they are very sensitive to the homeless staying here and that and their plight. That dealing with the organizers here is one thing, dealing with the homeless is something else. Reporting live from downtown Richmond, Wayne Coble, brought back to you in the studio. All right, thank you, Wayne. Rescue crews had to be called on scene there near Canal Plaza after one of the protesters on a bicycle was hit by a minivan. Happened on 8th Street between Canal and Cary Street. Our cameras were rolling just after it happened. The cyclist was able to move her arm on her own while being put on the stretcher. We're told that police are looking into who was at fault here. Meanwhile, up in New York, Occupy Wall Street protesters are hitting a milestone in their demonstration. Instead of the hundreds of members of Congress who have been bribed by corporations to represent them. Instead of the hundreds of members of Congress who have been bribed by corporations to represent them. Monday marked one month since they took over Zuccotti Park. A message on the Occupy Wall Street organizing website talks about what they see as their accomplishments. Spreading their protest globally, becoming more demographically diverse, gaining support in the United States heartland, and changing the national dialogue. Protesters are planning a demonstration against police brutality for this coming weekend. Arrested at an Occupy protest? There's an app for that. A developer has created the I'm Getting Arrested app for Android phones. At the touch of a bullseye, it sends an instant message to friends, family, and your lawyer, letting them know that you're getting hauled off to jail. Just pre-program the contacts in your Android, and when the cops head towards you with those twist high cuffs, just hit the bullseye. Protesters occupying downtown Richmond, raising their voices against what they're calling the economic establishment. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us. I'm Rob Cardwell, in for Cheryl Miller. What started out as a small demonstration against corporate greed on Wall Street in New York has spread across the United States, even here to Richmond where Occupy Richmond protesters are camped out at Canal Plaza, now in their third day of the local movement. Our Wayne Coble lent his ear to their message. Protesters here in downtown Richmond say they have a clear message they want to send to the world, and especially to businesses right here in Richmond. Hey, hey. Oh, oh. Corporate greed is not And it's strangers who have now come together and formed a group and created Occupy Richmond protest out of a bunch of voices. They're linked together for a common goal, they say, to empower the people. Second year med student Vanessa Coleman says it's important for her to be here. My patients aren't going to be okay if they don't have health care, if they don't have enough to eat, if they don't have their benefits. That's not going to help them. What's going to help them is if we get real change and we empower the people. Part of empowering the people, they say, starts with big business and big government. We are in solidarity with Occupation Wall Street, of course. Um, we are just very unsatisfied with the fact that our government has been hijacked. All three branches have been hijacked by the corporate sector. I kind of agree, um, but I don't know if this is necessarily going to work, so to speak. Um, I feel for the people that feel so strongly, but um, maybe someone will actually take notice. Many of the protesters that are out here this morning spent the night here last night, and they say they'll continue to stay here for as long as it takes. In downtown Richmond, Wayne Coble, CBS 6. Occupy Richmond movement has a Kanawha Plaza address. Protesters are there despite requests by Richmond's chief of police to leave. Did tonight's rain change anything? Here's Mark Holmberg's report and commentary, noon at 11. I think it's the string it right this 
Kanawa Plaza downtown is turning into a tent city with nearly 150 people on a rainy evening, about 25 of them the usual homeless camper. There are now about 35 tents there, including a meeting hall put up tonight, floored with pallets. There's food and refreshment. Oh, food's great. I love it. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. Late in the day, <laughs> Richmond Mayor Dwight Jones issued a statement affirming the right of the demonstrators to protest peacefully in the park, as long as they do so legally. The city's kind of standing back and going, whoa, we need to deal with something we've never seen before. The police chief has told them the tents have there. to go. No, sir, I am not confident at all, and I know it's coming, Mark. I still like to throw a good... This protester was there for the last occupation in March, a week-long live-in protest in Monroe Park that ended with 20 officers swooped in in the middle of the night taking down the camps and arresting people. Thank all of you. Thank, Thank all of you. For being here. For being here. Out in the rain. Out in the rain. While their meetings, like tonight's, seem like grade school exercises, there's no questioning the passion and growth of the movement. The last count I heard was over 90 countries and 1,800 cities have occupied movements. Now many of the people here don't believe the police are going to swoop in anytime soon. Now, I'm told Mayor Jones is gritting his teeth about this occupation. There have been police raids on similar occupations in San Francisco, New York, and Boston. At Kanawha Plaza, Mark Holmberg, CBS 6 News. <laughs>